Hey, what's up guys? Got the new Wise Mesh Router Pro that I'm gonna unbox and review. Do my full on speed test and wired and wireless backhaul range test, talk about the app. This is a two pack version. It is the Pro version, which means it's Wi Fi 6C with a speed rating of AXC 5400. And it also has tri band. So it has a 2.4 gigahertz, a 5 gigahertz, and the new 6 gigahertz band, which is designated for Wi Fi 6C devices. It also comes as a single pack. You can also add these to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. Now, in a separate video, I will compare it to the Wise Mesh Router. Well, I will review this, and then in another video, I will compare the two to each other. But we're going to concentrate on the Pro right now. All right, unboxing time. Wise, we're glad you're here. It's time to experience whole home uninterrupted Wi-Fi coverage. So some basic info, what the lights mean, status lights, things like that. Download it from the App Store or the Play Store. Not too big, around the same size as an Eero Pro 6C, I would say. So we have the power port, reset, USB. I'm assuming the USB is for sharing an external hard drive that you could share among the network. And we have a 2.5 gigabit port and a gigabit port. Now, it looks like these are auto sensing ports, but I will play with that and find out. So, 100 to 240 volts. Another one, same thing. And we have an Ethernet cable, and it does not say which category it is. And we have another one of these guys. Let's get started. It's been two weeks since I've unboxed these using as my main mesh system and so far so good. So everything connected, no drops, something like that. In that time, I had a chance to do all my speed test, range test. I have all those numbers here. I used my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S23 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, there are two things that I learned in the past two weeks. Number one is during setup, it needs to be in wireless backhaul configuration. Now, once setup is done, you can plug it in and make a wired backhaul. However, for setup, it's important to note that, for me at least, it only worked in wireless backhaul when I was setting it up. After that, I connected it, good to go. Number two is this thing runs hot, very hot. It, it is hotter than any mesh system or router I've ever tested and probably by a factor of two or something. It runs super hot. Uh, to the point that I honestly thought it was going to drop connections or anything like that. Something weird, but no, it was, it was working just fine, <laughs> but just very hot. So the bottom does feel like metal, even though this is plastic, but the bottom does feel like metal. But I don't think they have enough vents here. So they have some on the bottom and they have some in the back. However, this is the part where it gets really, really hot. Do not place this in a cupboard with closed doors, with things on it, things next to it. Please do not do that. So just as a heads up, but and I mean, that's a general statement. You shouldn't do that with any router or mesh system anyways. Okay, now let's get into all the numbers which you guys have been waiting for. So starting with the internet speed test, as I always say, no matter how fast your mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So. When I hook up via Ethernet to this thing using my computer, I get those speeds, no problem. However, Wi-Fi devices are a different story. Looking at the speeds, we got some very good download speeds in Wi-Fi 6 and slower for the upload. And Wi-Fi 6E was faster, as you would expect, and a slower upload. So these are kind of typical numbers that I see with most mesh systems that I test. Now, to truly find out the performance of this thing, we need, to do a, we need to do a local speed test server. Now, I've done a separate video on this where I show you guys how to do it. I'll link it in the description box below. In fact, I'll link all of this stuff down below if you guys are interested. And if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Thank you guys for the support. It is free to subscribe. So local speed test. What I do is I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. This is the signal router configuration. This basically isolates the router, giving me the best possible speeds this thing can handle. In the wired and wireless backhaul configurations, for wired I should say, these two are hooked up to each other via Ethernet, which gives it a faster stable connection. And when I do the speed test, I'm on this one, which then jumps to this one, which then goes to my server. And then for the wireless backhaul configuration, which is typically the most convenient, is this is just plugged in one or two rooms away. In my case, it's around 40 feet away or so. 
And again, I do the speed test from this guy, which then wirelessly drops to this guy, which then goes to the server. So the single router configuration, we get a massive increase in speeds, both for download and upload. And especially for the Wi-Fi 6C devices, there's a huge bump in speeds. Now, when we look at the wired backhaul configuration, it's pretty much right around the same for the uh, Wi-Fi 6 device, but for Wi-Fi 6C, there is a drop. You'll notice it's kind of capped around gigabit speeds, but the reason for this is that we only have one fast 2.5 gigabit port. If we had two fast 2.5 gigabit ports, it would actually uh, get those similar speeds on the secondary one as well. Now, these are auto sensing ports, so if you guys do have internet speeds of up to gigabit, you can use the gigabit port and then use your 2.5 to create a local 2.5 gigabit uh, LAN, I should say, local area network. However, that's not going to improve your internet speeds at all. So just as a heads up, and only devices that can support those speeds will take advantage of that. Okay, now looking at the wireless backhaul speeds, we could see there's definitely a drop in speeds and, you know, right around 500 down, 500 up, pretty much for both cases. It's more on the slower side for a tri-band system for wireless backhaul. Now, if you're running security cameras or anything like that, this is more than fast enough for anything like that. However, if you're trying to game and you're running it on wireless backhaul, probably not the best idea. Okay, jumping into range test. Now, range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of the routers around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. Now, in my case, at 20 feet away, I get some very good speeds, hardly a drop. At 50 feet away, I'm outside, there's a drop, but it's still getting very, very good speeds. At 100 feet, still okay, and it takes me all the way up to 250 feet, which is fairly good considering the price of this thing. Now, for setup and configuration, you use the Wise app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. It's very clean, very simple to use. Uh, but it's, it is worth mentioning that it is limited on options. Now, it does give you all the main options, like picking your SSID name. Uh, you can separate the names between the different bands, so it's one name for all of them, which is what I personally prefer anyways, but just as a heads up. Uh, you can also set up a guest network. There are some basic parental controls from what I saw. And you can also run it in bridge mode, which is not something I recommend. And you could control the LEDs, turn on and off the LED on the top and uh, bottom as well. It's kind of more designed to be a simplified interface. So you could kind of plug it in, determines everything, and you're good to go. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, honestly, it depends on your situation. Right off the bat, I'm going to say this is a good budget system for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired backhaul. Now, it can support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. However, even in wired backhaul, the secondary one will be capped to gigabit speeds at the best. So do keep that in mind. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.